Next, we're going to discuss preparing your images for offset printing. Now that means sending it to a commercial printer where they use the four color plates, CMYK, and possibly a fifth plate or a sixth plate to do a spot color or a spot varnish or a spot UV or something like that. So it's not how you're handling prints at home on your computer printers, I'm sorry, at home. So when things have to go to offset printing, they need to be in CMYK mode. And whether you do that or the printer does it, you actually should ask your printer if they prefer to have a CMYK file or if they would prefer to do the transformation themselves. So it is good to ask first. <clears throat> Let's open from our um, chapter 13 files this image called um, flowers JPEG. We saw that back in chapter 5 and we were talking about um, gamut and changing from RGB to CMYK. So if we look at this image it is an RGB so it's being produced with light and we're getting these pretty neat fluorescent very dramatic um, iridescent colors in the flower. Now remember RGB has a bigger color gamut what can be reproduced than ink does. Ink CMYK has a smaller color gamut. So if you were to show this picture to your client um, and then have it commercially printed, it's not going to look the same. So let's find out, rather than actually making the conversion, let's just see what it might be. So under our view menu up here, we have some options at the top. We have proof setup. We see the working CMYK, which is what we're seeing, the composite here. We could just see the cyan, the magenta, whatever, all these different plates. Um, we also have another group of some color modes, and then we have some options of gamut warnings for color blindness. So let's first stay up here at this top part, and let's make sure that there is a check mark in front of the CMYK. And that just means that's the one that we're going to see. And look what happened. If we're under our view, notice that it jumped to the proof colors. As soon as we told it to show us what it looks like in CMYK, it did that and it put a check mark in front, in front of the proof color. This is actually just an on off button. So if we were to uncheck it, we go back to our RGB mode. So if we wanted again to see it in working CMYK, see how dull that got. And to go back to RGB, we just uncheck this proof color or command Y. It's just a shortcut for on and off. All right. <clears throat> then we have an option here called gamut warning. So anything that's out of gamut that won't print with inks, if we turn this on, we see Everything that's gray right now is out of gamut, meaning it cannot be reproduced by ink at this time. So that's kind of giving us a big warning that the bulk of this picture is not going to print well, and that's not something that we want. So we'll just uncheck this one again to go back to our regular view. All right, so if this is our file, and it's still an RGB and we're sending this off to a commercial printer and they say yes we do want you to make the conversion you need to send us a CMYK file um, we're going to make sure that we are in the right color setting first so under our edit option here we can go down to color settings shift command K so we're into our pro or into our preferences rather Yep, and in our color settings, we have some options from the drop down here, and North American General Purpose 2 should be the one selected. This preset is ideal if you do a combination of both print and web work, which we do. So there's a specific, I'll just unclick that, a specific color space of sRGB and then all these letters and numbers that I'm not going to read. Um, this is the color profile that most web users have on their computer. So RGB is what we see with devices and monitors. So this is the same color space as most people. And again, you get a little description at the bottom. This is the characteristics of the average CRT display. And this is the color space endorsed by a lot of people. Um, then 
we have the CMYK, and this needs to be the US web coded swap version 2. That's what we use. Um, that's the standard CMYK color space. So because you chose this North American general purpose, we have a good space for our color web and a good color space for if we do commercial offset printing. Um, another one that could be used is North American Prepress 2. Notice we had a change here in the RGB. This preset uses a different RGB color space. This color space is actually larger than the other one, so you have more colors available to you, but if your end user looking at it on their screen does not also have this large color space enabled, they're going to miss out on those colors. So it's kind of like using the other one is more, you're going to affect, you're going to target the most people that way. So let's switch back to the North American general purpose. Okay, so we picked our color settings here and we say, okay, just so you know, the best place to actually do this is in Bridge because Bridge we use with all of our Adobe platform. We use it in, we can go grab things from Photoshop, we can preview our InDesign files, we can preview Illustrator files. So if we set the color space in Bridge, it's going to apply across the whole creative suite and it's going to apply that color space to everything. So that's a good way of doing it. All right, um, if we did want to convert this to CMYK, we would do an image mode CMYK color. And of course it's gonna get dull, we expect that. It warns us that we're going to convert using that profile that we just saw. And yep, unfortunately that's kind of the sad look, but we did, if we look over at our channels, we do now have the four different plates, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And um, where that color is going to show through or be laid down or not is um, shown here in these different channels. All right, we can close that and we're going to learn about, I'm going to not save it, we're going to learn about duotones next.